I guess it was two weeks ago because we had a guest speaker last week. We talked about authority and where we get it, right? We talked about where we got it. We know that it comes from the Father. We talked about that. If you didn't get a chance to look, go to YouTube and watch. It's, this is the second part. And this is how we get it. Where we get it is from the Father. We understand that. Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. He only said what he heard the Father say. And I promise you, I wake up every day and I say, Lord, what is it you want me to say? What is it you want me to do? And I really am trying to do that. Now listen, it's not perfect by any means. But if we're truly following him, then we will listen for him to tell us to do something. And that's how this works. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So how do we get authority? We get it the same way Jesus got authority. And you're like, okay, well, how's that? So we know where he got it. He got it from the Father. So how did he get it? Because remember, authority is given to the responsible. And it's taken from the irresponsible. Right? Remember we talked about your promotions, all of this stuff, you know, all of that. It, everything comes from the Father. Now you can mess things up royally. You can try and do it yourself. You can try to make things happen. You can try to make that square piece fit in a round hole. And you know what? You may have some success. But you know what's going to happen? Is that square piece is going to be damaged. That round hole is going to be damaged. Because we're forcing things. And if we would just walk with him, listen to him, watch what he does, hear you know, what he's saying, and we do that, then we're good, right? So let's talk about this. How did Jesus get it? Now let's go to Matthew 21. We're going to look at Matthew 21, verse 18 first. 18 and 19. I'll read this to you. This is New King James Version I'm using. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. Now, let me ask you something. Is that authority? Have you ever done that? That's authority. You know, for you to say to the fig tree, hey, listen, no more fruit's ever going to grow on you again. And instantly it withered away. Now, we, we, we look later, we talk about that later. It took a day for that to happen, but what happened is immediately at the roots, it started to die. So, you know, when some of you are talking, listen, please, don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you're praying for healing and you don't see it immediately. Right. We're, now we're talking, are we talking miracles? Or are we talking healing? It takes time sometimes for healing. You know, there, it's progressive. Now, miracles can happen instantly. Absolutely. We see example after example. We've seen miracles in our own lives. We've seen miraculous healings. We've seen people raised from the dead. We've seen these things. But we're talking about, if we're talking about healing, and you pray for healing, and you wake up the next morning, and it's not 100% better, listen, I, I know people that would say, oh, it, it didn't work. God must not be doing what he said he's done. Ah, there must not be a God. There must, listen, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And here's some knowledge for you. Healing takes time sometimes. Right? All right. Now listen, when he, him talking to this fig tree, that's authority. I, I, I'm agreeing that that is legitimate authority. All right? Now, remember Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. So who really cursed the fig tree? Okay, so you were listening two weeks ago. It wasn't, it was Jesus, yes, but it was the Father. He said, I only do what the Father does. Mm -hmm. So it was actually the Father. Jesus heard the Father say it, so he said it. You know, and, and think about, I want you to picture in your mind them walking along, and he goes to get some fruit off the tree of fig, and it's not there. Instantly, in his spirit, he heard the Father say, curse that tree. And so he said it. Now, if we could get to a point in our life where we're walking along and we just heard in our spirit him to say this or do this, that's where you see the things happen. That's where you get these, mar these miracles that happen. It's just, I mean, w once you get that, everything that comes out of your mouth wouldn't be a lot of things. 
you really have to be careful. Jesus wasn't just walking, walking along and he's hungry and he saw a fig tree without any figs and he belts out a curse. That wasn't the way it worked. He's like, you know what? There's no figs on there. Guess what? Damn thee. That's Hebrew, right? That's not what he did. He went up. He saw that it had no fruit on it. And he heard the father say, okay, here's what I want you to do. And he listened to it and he did it. There's always a reason why he asks us to say something or do something. And you don't know what that reason is most of the time. You won't know till later on. We're doing things right now. We heard seven, eight years ago. We had no idea what it meant. And it's perfect for right now. What we're, what we're walking out. It, that's discipline. How many of you know we have to have discipline? We have to be disciplined. Which is why I make everyone that stays with us make their beds. Anyway, I'm just kidding. you're like, I'm not staying over there. He did it for a reason. And what was the reason? Matthew 21, verse 20. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, which means, listen up, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. So there's a reason he did that. And the reason was, and you know, guess what? They saw and they got to ask questions. Like, Wait, how did that happen? So he has an opportunity to not only to teach them, but to teach us. How we're supposed to do that. That's amazing. Not only will you do what's done to the fig tree, but guess what? Also, on top of this, in addition to that, if you say to a mountain, be moved and cast into the sea, guess what? It'll be done. That's amazing. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, this will be done. How many of you know believing is important? I know so many people that call themselves Christians, and you know what? I, 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 you hear them. We hear them all the time talking about, how, yeah, I just, I don't believe that's true. I, you know, how can that be possible? You know, how many, you know, and that's fine. That's just where they are in their walk, which we've all been there. We've all been at that point. If someone would have told me, hey, listen, I saw that person raised up from the dead, which you read in the Bible all the time. I said, oh, yes, yeah, Jesus, son of God, you know. But we're talking about doing those things, walking those things out, using the authority that he's given us. I don't know. But, you know, after you, 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 you have to trust. Christianity is based on faith. Amen. Right? Where's your faith? So as we walk this out and you hear people saying, I don't, I don't believe this, you have to believe. All of these things have to be there. Right? It's like the father with the son that was, a, you know, demoniac. He came up to him and the, 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 <laughs> the disciples couldn't, cast out the demon. So the father goes, Why, your, your disciples can't do this. Can you, you know, and what does Jesus say? Long story short, he says, he goes, doubt. You have doubt, basically. They have doubt. And when you have doubt, you're basically tying his hands. So belief is important. The discipline's important. Belief is important. Most Christians don't believe that. You speak to a mountain, move the mountain, okay? And if you say you believe it, I don't want to show you say your hands, but those that say you believe it, go move a mountain. What's the key here? The key is you don't just walk around and go, you know what, I'm a Christian, so watch that mountain over there, watch, I'm going to make it move. What are we not doing? We're not hearing the Father say, move the mountain. Amen. Amen. So what we do is we walk around as Christians and say, oh, I can get this done, I can do, no, that's not the way we walk around. We walk around with confidence and faith in the Lord that our Father is going to tell us what needs to be done and how we need to do it. And he'll tell us, he'll say, hey, listen, I, and he's done it many times. He'll go, hey, listen, I want you to go pray for them. And I'm sitting there going, I'm not going to pray for them. I don't even want to be near them. And he's telling me, go pray for them. Go lay your hands on them. And before, I'm just thinking, I'm not going to do that. I don't even know him. And I was embarrassed. This is my walk through the years. And then I finally did it in Scotland. I'm sitting there. I'm tired. 
I, I mean, I was, you know, obviously a Christian at this point and doing things, but there's still me in there, the flesh. I'm tired. I want a Coke. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit goes, go pray for him. Poor guy was bent over. Matter of fact, it was yesterday. I got on our, our memories, that picture popped up back in 2016, something. And there's a picture of me and the guy afterwards. And he's smiling. I'm smiling. At the time, I'm tired. And I'm going, I don't want to pray for him. The Holy Spirit's going, go pray for him. That's the Father talking to you. Yes. So I finally did it against my own better judgment, tired and all. I go walk up to him. And I said, hey, you know, I, I tell you this a lot because I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Because I said, do you believe, do you have enough faith that you could be healed? He says, no, I don't. I said, it's okay. I got enough faith for both of us. You know, trying to just let him understand that, you know, there's healing for him if he, if he would accept that. And so I put my hand on his back and I said, in the name of boom, he stood up. He goes, I feel fire. He went running up and down the aisles. And it was, I'm sitting there going, wait, I'm tired, wait. I was like, Lord, what happened? Where's my Coke? You know, what happened here? I just, but because if we get this, if we get it, it's not going up to a mountain and going, mountain, move. It's not that. It's the Lord. It's the Father saying, please do this. I want you to do this. And this is how I want you to do it. Too often we wear, we wear the you know, big banner up here, Christian. We walk around and we're like, okay, hey, oh, yeah. You know, that there's a dead person there, get up. It doesn't work like that. Right. We spent three hours in a funeral home with a father praying over a 14-year-old girl that was dead. And he was, you know, praying, you know, he was wanting her to see her raised and, and to get up and you know what I mean? I never heard a father tell me, pray for her to be resurrected. Rebecca, didn't hear from the Lord on that. So what turns out is we heard from the father to go and there's a reason. We were there for the father of the child. We were there for him. And so what you do is you listen. You learn to trust. Our discipline is to, to discipline ourselves to hear from the Lord, right? And then to do what we hear. Whether you're tired, whether you don't have makeup on or your nails aren't painted, you still do what he's asked you to do. And I'm not saying specifically anybody. If we can understand this, if we can get this, I'm telling you, the changes in your life will be amazing. You know, we're, we're, we have people in our life that are, that are addicted, you know, to drugs and things like that. And, you know, and you love these people so much, you just want to, you know, choke a knot in them. You know, just like, come on, don't you get this? Can't you understand? But that's not, that's what, I'm not hearing the Father at that point. I'm hearing me who loves them so much, who is a human being. I'm trying to just get them to understand and you can't, you can never make someone understand. I will tell you, is it, we always preach what the Lord drops in us. That's what we do. And you, so I can't tell you how many times we preach on something, God inspired, and then a week later, someone sitting in that same service will come up and go, oh, you should have heard what so-and-so preached on. It was on this. It's the exact same thing we had just preached on. And you're going, and the Lord said, listen, you did your job. It's Okay. Because we have to learn with that discipline to hear. Not just to listen, but to hear. What's being spoken to me? What can I do to put that into my daily walk so that I can actually minister to people? Don't try to move a mountain you're not told to move. You're going to wear yourself out. You're going to have people looking at you going, okay, the Lord told you to do this and it's not moving. What kind of Lord are you serving? It becomes about us. We want the recognition. We want to say, oh, a mountain mover. You know what I mean? And what's funny is so many people will come looking for signs and wonders as opposed to spending time with him. Here's a sign. Here's a wonder. Guess what? You were all were lost. Now you're saved. Here's a sign and wonder for you. You know what? how many people come in an office back there when you're not even looking, you're not even here, and, and they get delivered from strongholds? They get, they, they, they get their salvation Listen, if, if, if you read the Bible and you only want to take the most extreme things out of the Bible and that's what 
you're looking at that as actually a testimony of how the works of the, of the Bible, the works of the, you know, are being done and all of that stuff. You are missing the, the foundation thing that, listen, God is doing miracles and wonders every day in people's lives, yes. including yours. Amen. But you have to understand by looking off in the distance for other things, you're missing the things that are at your feet. Right. You are living with people right now that are supposed to be in your life. And are you taking them from granted? Are you showing them daily how much they're loved or how much they're respected? Or are you so irritated and frustrated with those people that you know why you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till Thursday when they're gone. And Thursday gets there and they're gone. And guess what? If you never see them again, you miss those days. The opportunities that you had to speak into each other's lives. Don't do what I did. Don't have an opportunity to minister to someone and three days later they're dead, we're in combat. Don't do that. I don't want to look back again like that. I don't ever want you to feel that way. I don't ever want you to look that way. The person that's around you right now, the people that are with you right now are there for a reason. Whether you messed it up and put yourself in that situation or not, God's going to bless it if you let him. Don't overlook right now. Listen, it's the Father speaking. It's not me getting up the nerve. It's not me chanting over and over to get it to happen. Amen. It's not getting myself pumped up for you. You know, you, you see, you, and I'm not, please hear my heart, I'm not talking to anyone badly. I'm saying, listen, we love you. You're our family. So what I'm telling you is from my heart. I don't have to scream and yell and stomp across the stage and work up to set the, uh, sweat for people to say, oh, that's an anointed teaching. Yeah. The more you yell, the more anointed it is. Listen, I was raised in that. I was brought up in that. But I was also had the father inside of me telling me, listen, that's not real. And he also told me, yes, that's real. Yes, that's real. But you know what? That's not real. So that's, and I know he's called me to do what I'm doing now to, to help you walk through this because there's so much trash out there that's being taught, being spread. So much stuff that's trying to take you off the path of where you're supposed to be. Your walk, where he's called you to be in this life. You're focusing on other things, whether it's television shows or whether it's sports or whether it's who knows what, pornography or, 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 or alcohol, whatever. That's what the enemy wants. And the Lord is trying to tell you, just listen, stop where you're at. Just drop all the other stuff. Just get rid of all that other baggage, all that religion, all the stuff you've been taught before 30, 40 years ago, and let's just pick up the Bible, and let's just start over. You're a Christian. You're saved. But you know your head's filled with trash. And that's just what we had to go through. She's Southern Baptist, right? I was Pentecostal. You know what I say now? I say, I, I'm a Christian. That's my denomination. I believe in Jesus and what the word says. I, I am, no, no more fences built up between each other. You can't come in here. You're a Methodist. You can't come in here. Oh, you're Lutheran. You know, you can't do that. We can't do that. And we're not going to hold it against anyone because they have denominations on them. We love them. We'll, we'll talk to them as much as they'll let us. And we don't, you know, we're not the best of anything. But we love Jesus, and we're trying our best for people to see our hearts and understand that, listen, let's do this together. Amen. Let's do this together. Because there's so many people sick and stuck in the world. Yes. I'm trying to tell you, you don't know if you're a male or female. They're trying to tell you that you get to make a decision up to a certain age. Well, guess what? I don't know what I'm going to put on my birth certificate. I say it's the parents. I think the parents just need to spend some time with the Lord, and, and, and not everyone's going to do that. And that's, you know what we can do? We can love them. We can pray for them. And we can plant little seeds as we walk along this path. They cross our path, plant a little seed. Please, don't try and cram things down people's throats. Please, just plant a seed. You know, if you disagree with their theology, that's fine. Don't argue. Just never argue, please. And never discuss the Bible unless you have a Bible there with you. Don't try and remember your, your verses. Don't try and bring it back from memory. Then you start mixing words around and getting things all messed up. And if you look, if you read, 
yeah, you know, in Genesis, I mean, yeah, the enemy got it, you know, pretty close, but he didn't get it right. So I'm just saying, to truly love someone is to care enough to tell them when they're killing themselves. Now, they may not like it, they may hate you, they may scream and yell, but if you tell them the truth, you're planting a seed in their life that someone else can come later and help cultivate. God gives himself to those who give themselves to him. Here's the thing, and I said this before, the currency in the kingdom is time. Give him time. Is it possible, he's been speaking to you the whole time about the sickness you've been in, and he's, he's been speaking to you the whole time because he wants you well, he wants you healed, but you haven't spent the time just to hear him. And maybe it's because of something you've been taught before. You're stuck on it. On. You're stuck on this theology that's wrong. It does not align with the word or what his nature is. Very, very been there, done that. <laughs> I knew, I knew God was doing this to me because he was teaching me a lesson. No, that is not the God we serve. He doesn't put sickness and disease on you to teach you a lesson. Please stop thinking that. It's not a test. Jesus came to set us free. And he did that. He broke those chains. He broke those bonds. He did all that. So listen, see yourself for who you are. Wednesday night, we were talking about healing. Listen, what are you allowing in your life? What are you allowing in your body? What are you allowing in your eyes and in your ears? Listen, he wants to heal you. He wants you set free. But listen, we have a part to play in that. We have to stop allowing things in our life. Come on. We have to stop allowing that language. We have to stop allowing those things we're watching and hearing and seeing because we're allowing gateways. These are little gateways that are into our life. And it's hard. I understand that. There's things you've done your whole life and then people say, oh, you're getting religious on me. No, I'm not getting religious on you. I'm saying if we soak in him, in his word, guess what? Just, just, just being a steak and marinade. We're absorbing him. And how do we teach? What he wants us to teach is how you have to teach from the overflow. If we're teaching just what we know, we're emptying our, ourselves and we're only giving you what we know. We don't want that. We want him to fill us up and we want to teach from the overflow. And that's what we want for you is we want you just basking in his overflow. We want you marinating in him. Oh, so none of this is what I was talking about. But Jesus had power and authority because he gave God his time. We need to give him time. How often do we look at a week? It's been a week? Wait, where did the week go? Because we're busy. We have jobs. We have pets. We have other pets. We call them kids. And they take time. But listen, you have to schedule in time for the important things, which means every day my first fruits are to him. I wake up in the morning, it's with him. I told you, call it lazy way, whatever you want to call it. I wake up, I stay in bed, and I'm with him. I pray, I meditate, I get words. We've had dreams after dreams lately. Good stuff, don't get me wrong, good stuff. But you have to schedule that in and you'll start hearing his voice more clearly and you'll hear the father telling you, okay? You know what's amazing? Is someone will come to your mind. You're praying, you're meditating, someone will come to your mind. They'll just pop in you're like, I haven't thought about them. And that's, right. that's the father. That's when you start praying. That's when you contact us, send us an email, text us, whatever, and say, hey, listen, I, this, this person came to my mind. Would you agree with us? Would you pray? Absolutely. And I'm telling you, it'll start happening more and more and more. And just know that he trusts you. You spend time with him, he trusts you. He'll give you more, and he'll give you more, and he'll give you more to where, guess what? You know, you know Kim, you'll be up here preaching one day. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where if you give him enough time, 
he's going to give you more. He will never give you more than you can handle. He's, he's not here to kill you. He's not going to tell you to go on a worldwide ministry, and your ministry is to go all over the world, if you know what, if you can't even walk up a flight of steps without losing your breath. That's, right. That's, right. That's not what God does. He loves you. And he, listen, it's not failure to start from scratch. If there's something you're battling in your mind, oh, this is right now, it's not, hey, listen, that's not God. Who's the author of confusion? The enemy. Everything we need is in here and in here. We just need to spend time with him. So if there's anything causing you confusion, if there's anything causing you strife, if there's anything causing you to, to bicker and argue with each other, pride, arrogance, all of those things, strife, every evil work, Get rid of it. It's not worth it. Go to that person and say, hey, listen, I love you. And, I'm, and I don't know what's going on, but I just know it's not right. It's not God. Let's, let's clear the air. And you know what? You being the bigger person, whatever they decide to do is on them. That's right. You cannot control another person, so stop trying to do it. Even if it is your spouse, even if it is your child, whatever, you cannot control them. Please stop trying to control another person. You give, you give yourself to this, say, listen, I am sorry, I love you, I apologize, I don't ever want to do that again. Then you've just taken all of that, you've shown them God, now they get to pick and choose what they do. And, and, and listen, you cannot wait or expect a certain response from them because you did what you know to be right. Because they can still be wrong and go do more wrong things and be even worse about it, but you know what? That's between them and God at that That's point. Right. You can't control that. And please, for the love of God, don't apologize to someone and then say, well, aren't you going to apologize to me? <laughs> yeah. That's an expectation you don't want to have. Because you may never get it. I told you once, I'll, told you, I'll tell you again, the most hurt Rebecca and I have ever been is with Christians. We've never been so hurt as we have with Christians. Christians. And I know it's because a lot of people wear the title of Christian without really realizing what a Christian really is. It's a little Christ. I know Jesus wouldn't have acted that way toward us. And, and, and just being transparent, I don't know how many people we've hurt under the guise of being a Christian. I don't want that. I don't want religion. I don't want theology. I don't want any of that. What I want is a relationship with Jesus so that I can hear what the Father says to me and I can do what the Father does. I want to I say what he says. I want to do what he does. I don't want to go out and say I'm a Christian and try and lift a car over my head and say, see, I'm a Christian. That's not what that is. What it is is going and, and just living your life and being kind to people and being, you know, loving on people the best you can. And if they're, they're you know, in your face and they're angry, and they're, you know, that's fine. That's between them and God. Just move on. But, it, you know, God will stop you and say, why don't you bless them? I, you know, we've had people, you know, we, I'll, I'll be eating dinner with someone. He'll say, write a check to them. I was like, wow, God uses checks. You know what I mean? My mind will start going, that can't be God. God didn't have checks. You know what I'm saying? My mind. But what he does is he uses the body. So whatever it is in your life at this point, if you have a business, if you have, if you don't, who knows? You may be struggling financially and the Lord will say, I want you to give them this much money. You're like, Lord, that's all I've got. That's, that's always how he works. He just bless them. And you know, because you don't know why. You have no idea why. But he does. And once you trust him with that, guess what? He's going to trust you with more. And he will always take care of you. Matter of fact, one, one of the dreams we, we were talking about was all the provision that he's asked us to do, what we're doing here, has already been set aside for us. But there's people in the body who aren't listening to the Holy Spirit. And you can talk to anybody, any pastor, anybody that's ever in a relationship with the Lord like this. Andrew had a great story about an old jalopy, an old car. Remember that? If those of you that know Andrew, 
He said, I tried to sell that car. And he said, we needed that money so bad. And he said, you know, we just gave it to the Lord. And, and the Lord told him, he goes, there's someone I've asked to do this, and they're not doing it. They, they've, yeah, I won't go in detail. I don't remember all the details. But what he said is, when he prayed to the Lord, said, okay, Lord, we're praying that you remove any obstacles from us doing what you've asked us to do. And sure enough, was it, uh, uh, yeah, it was his wife, yeah. So was it two weeks later, a guy came to buy it, and he goes, he said, uh, I've been, he goes, I was, gonna, I was supposed to buy this a few weeks ago, but it was my wife's fault. <laughs> no, but, he's, but he said, he goes, I was, I was supposed to do this a couple of weeks ago. So what I'm saying is, listen to the Lord. Let him guide your steps. Don't let a person tell you what to do. I mean, as a, you know, as a couple, you talk about things, absolutely. You work things out together. I'm just saying, listen to the Lord. Because what happened when, he, when we were sitting there eating dinner and he said, write this check. When I got over myself and my flesh, I was like, okay, Lord, how much do you want me to write it for? I turned to Rebecca and she goes, are you going to write the check? And I was like, what? And then that's not the, <laughs> the amazing part. The amazing part is when I started writing it, I said, how much? And it was exactly what the Lord told me. Mm. So the Lord will talk to you. You're, you. You are a team. You become one with your spouse. I'm telling you. But here, well, here's what I want you to take today. And Jeremy, you can come on up whenever you're ready, brother. I'm all off anyway. So <laughs> listen. Start practicing. The, the, way, the only way you get better at anything is practice which I, I'm still practicing for my solo. Anyway, sorry. The only way to get better is to practice. And so what I would do is just, 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 just spend time with the Lord and you're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Use your prayer language. Just, just pray in tongues all the time and just practice and hearing what he says. And the way we would practice is we would just pray in tongues and we would write down the things. And, and see, our mind's not trying to think of anything. We're just praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, things will come, and we write them down. And I'm telling you, every time, it is right on, and it's right on time. So I just, I just want to encourage you guys today, just listen, start hearing from the Father.